Today we're going to talk about why an 85mm lens, something with a longer focal length, can be smaller and more compact than something like a 35mm. So this is something I see beginning photographers question all the time. Why is it that when you go to the camera store and you look at lenses, sometimes an 85 millimeter lens is actually smaller and more compact than something like a 35? Now, in reality, there are a bunch of reasons for this. The size of the sensor that the lens is designed to illuminate makes a big difference. Also, the quality of the lens. In general, a higher quality lens with better optics will be a little bit larger. But the biggest thing that determines how big a lens is at any focal length is what photographers refer to as the speed of a lens. Now, this is super strange, right? Because most of us as photographers, especially if you're a beginner, you don't associate a lens being fast. You think of a camera being fast, right? Think more frames per second. You're on the sidelines shooting a sporting event. The speed of your camera system is how many frames you can crack off very, very quickly. But photographers refer to the speed of a lens as how much light can pass through that lens. Another name for this is maximum aperture. So what is aperture? Well, aperture is one of our three exposure controls. It directly controls how much light is able to pass through the lens. And most modern lenses have a controllable aperture, meaning we can set the aperture to be a very large opening or a very small opening. Obviously, the larger the opening, the more light is able to pass through the lens and hit the sensor at the back of the camera. Now, the numbering convention of this is a little bit backwards. The lower the number, the more light is able to pass through the lens. So a lens that could be set to say f2.8 is gonna pass more light through it than that same lens set to say f8, f11, or f16. Basically think lower the number, the more light can pass through the lens. But all lenses have a maximum amount of light they can pass through, which we would call a minimum, a lowest possible number we can set them to. Let me give you all a couple quick examples. We call this lens right here a 35 millimeter f 1.4 lens. That's how it's referred to uh, kind of in like the common speech. If you're talking to another photographer and they say, hey, what lens is that? I would say, oh, this is a 35 millimeter f 1.4 lens. What that means is that the maximum aperture of this lens is f 1.4. Maximum aperture is a little bit misleading here. Maximum referring to the size of the opening, minimum referring to the actual number. And that is the speed of this lens. This is an f 1.4 lens. That's the maximum amount of light that this lens can let through it. Now this is a 35 millimeter lens. Well, guess what? This right here is an 85. It's a longer focal length, but it's smaller than its 35 millimeter friend here. So the maximum aperture of this lens is f 1.8, a higher number than this one, which is 1.4. So what that means is this, if we let the maximum amount of light in possible with this 85, we would be set to f 1.8. If we let the maximum amount of light in with this 35, we would be able to set ourselves to f1.4. So again, there's a lot of variables here, but all else being equal, this 35 is a faster lens than this 85. And that leads to a large part of why this lens is a lot bigger and heavier than this one. So to summarize, the lower the number, the more light that lens can let in, and we would refer to that lens as being faster than a lens with a higher numbered maximum aperture. And again, when I say maximum aperture, I'm talking to the size of the opening, how big of an opening that lens can let through and how much light can pass through it to hit the sensor. Now this oftentimes becomes exceptionally apparent when you compare normal lenses. And again, there's other variables that make one lens bigger than another, but check this out. This lens right here is a Canon 24 to 105. This lens is a Canon 18 to 55. They're both what we would call normal lenses. Now, this one can go to 105, but also when we zoom it to 105, it gets quite a bit bigger, right? It enlarges quite a bit. Whereas this one, when we put it to 55, it doesn't get that much bigger. So if we look at the maximum size that these lenses take up, I think we can agree the 105 is considerably larger and heavier than this 18 to 55. I think this all becomes super apparent when we look at two different normal zoom lenses. 
right here I've got a Canon 24 to 105, and right here I've got a Canon 18 to 55. Now, they're a little bit different focal lengths, they're designed for different camera systems, yes, but the general theme holds true. This lens right here is f5.6 on the far range. That's the maximum aperture, the most amount of light that it can let in, the lowest number, however you wanna look at it. This lens is an f4 lens, so it's considerably faster. It's actually about a stop faster than this one. Now, there are other variables. Yes, this is a beginner video. Yes, those of you out there that are like, well, this one is technically an EFS lens for crop sensor cameras, and this one is a full frame lens, I know. But the takeaway in general is, the larger the opening that the lens can let through, the more light the lens can let through, the larger the lens needs to be. So I think this brings us to the obvious question of why we would want a faster lens. Why is faster better? Because so far all I've said is it can let in more light. Well, obviously letting in more light is a great thing. It means that you can shoot in dimmer situations, you can use a lower ISO if you want to, and you can get a faster shutter speed. It allows for more wiggle room in your exposure controls. The other thing though that it does that's even more important arguably is it gives you a shallower depth of field. And this is something that a lot of photographers strive for, especially if you're a portrait photographer and you look at portrait images and you see those blurry, beautiful backgrounds, you look at the bokeh in the background, there's lights and it's just pretty. And the only thing sharp in a portrait photo is just the person's eyes and everything else goes out of focus. That is achieved by using a very, very, very large opening, small numbered aperture. And if your lens can go to f1.4, that is gonna give you a much, much, much blurrier background than a lens that only goes to say f5.6 or f2.8. Lower the number, the blurrier and more beautiful that background can be. Now, depth of field also depends on your distance from the subject, depends on your focal length, a number of factors. In fact, we actually have a video that I'll leave up there in the corner that goes over depth of field and how to get those blurry backgrounds in your photographs. So everyone, that's the speed of a lens. You now know that if you're communicating with your photographer friends, you can impress all of them being like, oh yeah, this right here, oh yeah, this is an 85 f1.8. And immediately they'll know what focal length and what the maximum aperture is of the lens you're holding in your hand. Also, this kind of makes you feel bad for minimum aperture, right? If you're a landscape shooter and you're shooting at f16, 22 all the time, Nowhere here do we talk about that. You don't walk up and be like, oh, I got my 35 F32 right here. Like that doesn't happen. We talk about the other side of it. Uh, but landscape folks, you kind of get left out of the equation. So anyway, we talk about the most amount of light the lens can let through, not necessarily the least. And that's because there's things like hyperfocal focusing. Oh, I'll leave a video up there and down in the description if you want to learn more about that. If you're trying to maximize your sharpness from front to back versus blurring out those backgrounds. Everybody, I hope you got something out of this video. Again, this is a basic introduction to speed of a lens. There are a lot of factors that affect lens size, shape, weight, all those things. But if you got some value out of this video, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button. If you have a question, leave it down in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe for weekly videos on photography, editing, videography, all things kind of creator, creative, fun stuff. Hope to see you in a future video, and thanks for watching. Woo! Oh yeah, oh yeah.